and welcome back to Generation X Youth Sports Network. Let me tell you guys, the exciting high school action has just been off the charts. Yes. But you know what? Before they went to high school, they all played youth football. Let's talk about some of the kids that you know that are in high school now but just dominated when we covered them in youth football. Well, there was one right before our very eyes. Our number one player, Stacy Coley, just two short years ago for the Fort Lord of the Hurricanes. He's going to be the number two rated player in the state of Florida class of 2013. He goes to Northeast High School. Speaking about tremendous athletes, what about two years ago, one of the top quarterback prospects, Sean White, PPO, now starting quarterback, class of 2014, big time player. We're going to see some other guys coming up, I know, over the next couple of years, like Joe Yearby, who's at Central now, but there's more. Absolutely. Now, we talk about we will be able to expose and showcase <laughs> this new talent, Steve. Yeah. Now, guess what? We know the kids that are going to do the great things they're doing in high school now. Yeah. Share with us some kids that are going to do exceptional that, jobs this year. Ball? Let's exactly. See well, ball. well, I got to look at Mark Walton, Miami Garden Vikings, who played with Northside last year, who put basically put his team on his back to win the Super Bowl championship with the come behind victory that they had against Miami Garden Vikings uh, uh, that he played against mm -hmm. last year from Northside Panthers. So you got to look at him. I want to see what Dalvin Cook is going to do, yes. Mr. The Bionic Man. Timmy Irving. Yeah, uh, you know, Timmy <laughs> Irving, what Timmy Irving's going to do. There's some kids that just left. Uh, Optimus Football from Rashad Causey, who left PPO, is now going over to university school. Yep. These are some kids to keep an eye on, and I think you're going to expect some really, really big things. And there's some kids coming nice. up that are a couple years away from high school, and what we call Anthony Peanut Johnson, who also plays at Pembroke Pines Optimus. So expect some good things out of these kids, and we're going to be talking about them as blue chip prospects in high school soon. Absolutely. Well, your only source where you can catch the pre before the pros is right here on Generation X. Speaking of that, check out the next pros that you'll see on the youth level.
Continuing here, let me tell you, the coverage has been excellent today with these kids just doing a great job. I'm here with a hey, NFL legend himself, Coach OG. And, you know, Coach, we talk about translating. You know, being a great player is one thing, but coaching is another. And, you know, you, you can look at these kids that really fought hard all day. You got here early this morning. The Razorbacks did their thing, and I know you're proud of these kids. But when it got tough and you guys were in tight battles, tell me, what was the speech you gave these kids to say that they can be champions? Uh, we just told them that, you know, no one player made, makes a team. And every player on the team uh, definitely did their part. They didn't have any uh, discrepancies that nobody was upset. Everybody took their role. And we played uh, with just, you know, giving a lot of a lot of kudos to the kids. We only had two days of practice, so we were real excited about what we did. Well, absolutely. Well, you know, I don't know if the coaches can take too much credit now, you know, with two days of practice, but that shows you have a lot of talent. But I'm sure the coaches will take a lot of credit. <laughs> Coach, hey, after, the, after after today, I know we're going to go to Disney World. We'll celebrate the championships. But a lot of these kids will be trans they'll be uh, transitioning to tackle football. How does this kind of get their confidence going for the season once they get in pads? Oh, I think you said, said it exactly right. I think it gives them confidence that they know they can play against any talent they come up against. You know, all these kids have definitely uh, had a hard school year, did well in school, and now they're coming out for a little fun. And when the school year starts and the tackle football season starts, wherever they may play, I think this will carry over with the confidence factor. And I, I look for all these kids to do well wherever they are. Hey, here they are. They're champions today at the Miami Dolphins 7-on-7 seven seven Youth right here on Generation Next. Woo! Hey guys, and we are already crowned a champion here at the Miami Dolphins 7 on 7, right here at Generation Next. It doesn't get better than this, Coach. A hard fight all day. You've been out here since early morning, but it's worth it, the taste of victory. Absolutely, yeah. We've been out here since, I think, 9.30. A lot of my parents uh, had a lot of tough games, um, but that's what come out here for, the tournament, the the hard work, guys practice, a lot of practice, and it paid off today we won the championship. Absolutely. Coach, at the end of this game, it was a lot of controversy. It was a lot of going back and forth. Tell me, what, did you, what were you telling your kids to make sure they stayed, they kept, they kept their focus? What did I tell you guys all day long? What did I tell you guys all day long? Worry about football. That's all they were worried about is football. All Absolutely. Well, it showed these guys are champions here. They represent the city of Coconut Creek. But guess what? These kids have just been rated G. <laughs> Continuing coverage right here on Generation Next. Hey, the guys you see behind us, they used to winning championships. Hey, they've been up in Orlando a lot, but today was different territory. Instead of handling their business up there in Orlando, they handled it down here in the 305. And it's always been teams that always say, man, if we could only play Pop Warner teams outside of the league, teams from South Florida, teams from AYFL, Time where they got what they asked for today, Coach. South Florida Youth Football League brought their Scott Lake Vikings. Before that, you guys played the AYFL team at PPO. And, Coach, you've been undefeated all day, handled your business. But you know what? One thing I keep seeing you doing is winning and winning. What, what is it so special about these group of guys behind you that every time you guys get on the football field, no matter if it's 7-on-7 seven seven or strapping it up in the pads, you represent? These guys are used to winning, so they're going to come out and work hard, just like in practice. They're going to work hard in practice and – Come to the game and do the same thing. Coach, against in this last game, we saw Scott Lake came out there and trade blows with you early in it. I mean, we saw you went up early and they came back and scored right then, but we kind of seen your talent set in. What was the adjustments that made you guys come out in the second half and just really blow the doors off the off the game? Uh, coach and um, coaches made some adjustments during the half and came in from there. Now, everybody wanted to know, was this team going to stick together? Was this team going to go up to the next pound? Was the coaching staff going to stay intact from the, re the, the national champions last year where you guys did your thing uh, in Orlando? So the answer to that, now nah, we'll let it come from you and what, what all the competition can expect in Pop Warner this year. Okay, the coaches are coming back. Um, some of the players are not coming back. We added some. We added some depth, so we should be pretty strong this year. And if you had to compare two teams from last year to this year, how do you feel? Uh, no doubt this is the better team. Well, that means, hey, guys, if they won a national champion last year, there's some problems this year for you. Hey, but we'll see when it's, it's time for the football season stop. Pop Warner will crank up. Greater Miami Pop Warner, Florida City Razorbacks, not only national champs, Miami Dolphins under armor, seven-on-seven seven state champs, right here on Generation Next. 
Thanks a lot, Jonah. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of action going on here for the next uh, day, this entire day. And joining us from the Dolphins Academy and uh, somebody who knows a lot about this event, put it on for a couple of years, five years? Well, how many? This is our fourth, fourth year. year now. Uh, Tuan Russell. Tuan, first of all, great field, 64 teams from all over South Florida. The objective yesterday was obviously to give the kids a little life lesson, a little talking to from the brass at the Dolphins. Today, it's all about football. Take us through the entire weekend. I mean, yesterday was fun. I mean, uh, we, it's a two-day event, and yesterday we had a great opportunity uh, to talk to the kids about life. I mean, uh, Coach Sperano came out, and he was talking to the men one-on-one. Is that? I mean, you can see the white in those guys' eyes. There was nobody sleeping. They were standing up, seats, um, sitting back in their seats. And he was saying, hey, you know, if you want to be a great person, you have to be accountable, whether it's in, in your home, whether it's in the classroom, or whether it's on the football field. And he said he's looking for guys that want to be accountable. And I think that resonated with the, with the players because they, you know, they were there. They were listening to them. And we talked about, you know, issues of, like, sexting and Facebook, how that can affect your, adversely affect your life. Uh, we had, um, you know, uh, Eric Abagu from uh, uh, Under Armour came out, mm -hmm. and he talked to the guys. And we just wanted to get people in front of them and talk to them about positive things. And we gave them the HSPD planners, which are high school player um, development planners. And that th these planners are awesome because it talks about NCAA rules. It, I mean, even have, like, math lessons right. and English right. lessons in the planner and helps them schedule their life because one of the things, one of the challenges that um, high school players have is that they spend so much time playing football that they have to make sure the rest of their life is in order so that they can uh, accomplish all the goals that they want. And today is just fun. I mean, yeah. you know, their yeah. payment their payment was their time on yesterday in that symposium. Everything's today. completely free. And they show up today, and now you have all these athletes competing in a single elimination tournament, and they're out here playing. I mean, you as we get closer to the championship, they're, it's getting more intense. And you, right behind us, you know, you have these teams that are they're battling to go to Cleveland because the winner of this tournament represents the Miami Dolphins in Cleveland. And we've won it the last two years. And I think the reason that those teams have won it, one, because we have the best talent in the world. Sure. But two, because they're battle-tested. I mean, they come out of here and they've beat teams from every county, every social economic group, and they've had to be the highest team with the most integrity and the most talent to do so. So, I mean, we're excited about um, what's going to happen here soon. Well, Tuan Russell has it going on. Tuan, thank you so much. The explanation was great. I know you're a big football fan, and when they get to the Final Four, there's not a bigger cheerleader than him. Absolutely. I'll be right out there. <laughs>